Okay, uh, Social Studies U.S. History Standard 1B. We're going to do the last one here, the loss of the Massachusetts Charter. Uh, 7, the theme is conflict between the colonists and the royal government. So if we if you read our standard concerning that particular one down way at the bottom it says comma and the loss of the Massachusetts Charter in the transition to a royal colony and and our focus on that we need to focus on two words a loss and then a transition what was lost in Massachusetts Bay Colony their corporate charter is what they're going to lose. Uh, they're going to lose their corporate charter, and then they are going to be transitioned involuntarily to a royal colony or given a royal charter. Uh, that's going to anger a lot of people in the Massachusetts Bay Colony, and it's going to cause conflicts between them and King Charles II, the British king. <sighs> All right, let's first talk about uh, that. Uh, what what causes them to lose their corporate charter? All right, the Navigation Acts. We're going to talk about the Navigation Acts uh, again in Standard 2 when we start talking about this economic theory of mercantilism. Okay, these new 13 original colonies on the eastern seaboard or the Atlantic seaboard, that's pretty much uh, subjects to the British Crown, to, Great Br uh, to England and the King of England, and Parliament in England. They want to protect all of these commodities coming out of the colonies, all these natural resources and raw materials. So they want to keep other countries from getting these things from their colonies. So England and uh, King and uh, well, the Parliament passes a series of laws. They would be enacted by Parliament beginning in 1651 in the sole purpose of these navigation acts or to tighten England's control over the trade of its American colonies. <clears throat> and again, they want to protect all their assets. Uh, so let's look at three of the, the three big ones. The Navigation Act of 1651. Uh, English trade must be carried out in English vessels. In other words, ships that were made in England. Uh, that is, uh, all right, so if you traded with the colonies, or with uh, England, it had to be carried out on English vessels, mostly the American colonies. Uh, the Navigation Act of 1660 required that a ship's crew had to be at least three-quarter English. Three-quarters of the crew had to be English crew to keep jobs for English uh, shipmates. All right, second one here, under, second bullet under the Navigation Act of 1660 an enumerated or a list of goods or products that were not produced in the mother country that is England uh, goods like tobacco cotton and sugar could be shipped only to England from the colonies from the American colonies or, or other or to other British colonies but they could not be shipped and exported to foreign nations for sale that's a tough one for the American colonies because if a foreign country would pay more, they could make more money for it. So a lot of the colonists felt that was unfair. The Navigation Act of 1663. Um, goods shipped to the colonies from foreign countries had to be shipped through England or, or Wales. A duty had to be paid or taxed, and and then it had to be shipped further in English vessels, which would cost more money. All all this landing and all this taxing and then this trans transition from one ship to the next it's going to cause these goods to cost a lot more once they reach the colonists. The colonists would rather buy them cheaper but here again England's out to make money uh, that's the whole intent and purpose of having colonies. And the last bullet down here under this navigation act is the American exports to other countries also had to be landed in Wales and uh, tax. So this increased the cost and the shipping time for American colonists. Okay, let's take a look back and 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 see what uh, Massachusetts Bay Colony says. Originally, the original charter of the Massachusetts Bay Colony was a corporate charter, and this charter was a piece of paper or document that the king signed and uh, basically granted the charter 
to a corporation that established Massachusetts Bay Colony. Much like uh, the Virginia company that established Virginia co the Virginia Colony. Um, Massachusetts was disobeying all three of those navigation acts. As a matter of fact, all of them. Was not, was not abiding by them, was not following the law with those train with whoever they wanted to, send their goods wherever they wanted to go. And when questioned by the king in Parliament, Massachusetts Bay Colony's response was that they did not have to obey the Navigation Acts because they had a corporate charter to exist. What does that mean, a corporate charter? Basically a company, they're basically a corporation, a business entity that owns this charter. They're not a royal charter is what they said. Uh, and when it was created, they were not a royal charter. So what does that mean? And understanding what that means and what Massachusetts Bay Colony was saying, we have to understand the different types of charters. So if we look over here to the far left, the corporate charter, what does this mean when it comes to the relationship with the king, between the king and the colony? That's what we want to look at here. The king granted land to a company or corporation. Then that company governed this land and usually self-governed, but the people still had English rights. In other words, the entire colony and all its laws were governed by this corporation, by this company. And that's what Massachusetts Bay Colony is saying. Since we're a corporate charter, we don't have to abide by the King's laws or Parliament's laws. So why is the King going to transition them involuntarily to this royal charter over here? And let's look right here. What's the relationship with the King and this colony? The King and his ministers ruled the land within that colony. And, and this the colony had to abide by whatever laws there were, especially navigation acts in particular. Alright, so Massachusetts, we're not a royal charter, we are a corporate charter. So basically how does King Charles II react to this? This charter here, the corporate charter. King Charles II basically takes that corporate charter and counsels it he tears it up. He says it's void. No good anymore. So that is the lost part. When we talk about King Charles II counseling the corporate charter, that is where Massachusetts lost its charter. Lost it. And then King Charles II reissued or issued a royal charter to Massachusetts Bay Colony. And that is going to force Massachusetts Bay Colony against the, the colony's will to become a rural colony under the control of Great Britain. Alright, so see, we have a loss of the Massachusetts corporate charter and then its transition, although involuntarily, to a royal colony, all because of these navigation acts. Uh, they didn't want to abide by them. The king wanted them to, and the king and parliament wanted to protect. Uh, trade within the colonies. Alright, what's the theme here? The theme here is colonial conflict with the royal government. Uh, the colony here, Massachusetts Bay Colony, is going to have a conflict with King Charles II and the English Parliament. 